So an external interrupt, you can see here, they have the highest priority. An external interrupt is generated by a signal on one of these pins. So you can see here that port D pin 2 and port D pin 3, they have the functions INT0 and INT1. So these are the two pins that are used for external interrupts. And so if something happens on one of these pins, it can generate an interrupt also. And that's what we'll use in this example. So coming back down to the interrupt vector table, we see that the vector names are going to be int0 underscore vect and int1 underscore vect. So in this example, we want to, well, let me talk a little bit more about the interrupts and how they work. So let me draw the uh, hypothetical voltage on pin uh, INT0. So, so say it starts out high voltage and then drops to low voltage and then stays there for a while and comes back up. Well, interrupts can be generated in different ways depending on the sense control mode that we set up. So we can generate an interrupt whenever the pin is at low voltage. So as long as this pin is at low voltage, it's going to be generating interrupts. So that's the first of the four sense control modes. Low level, and then logical change. So whenever the pin goes from high to low, that would generate an interrupt because that's a logical change. Or when it goes from low to high, that would also generate an interrupt if we have the inter external interrupt set up for the sense control for logical change. And then the other, the third way is falling edge. In this case, an interrupt would be generated at this cycle, but no interrupt would be generated, generated here. And then the fourth way is rising edge. So in that case, we would generate an interrupt at this point, but not at this point. And those modes are controlled by a register and that register is called EICRA. So let's go to interrupt, external interrupts and the register description. So external interrupt control register A. So for the bits are reserved, so those are always zero. And then here we have uh, two bits for each of the two external interrupts. So ISC11 and ISC10 control interrupt one and then ISC01 and ISC00 control the uh, sense mode for interrupt zero. And this table shows you uh, how to set up, what values to get those bits depending on the mode you want it in. So if they're both zeros for interrupt one, then it's low level interrupt. Zero one gives you an interrupt on any logical change. One zero is an interrupt on a falling edge, et cetera. All right, and then the other interrupt would be the external interrupt mask register. And this just enables interrupts from these two sources. So if we write a one to this, then we are enabling interrupts from INT1. And if we write a one to the zero bit, then we are enabling interrupts from INT0. All right, now we'll get into the example. Camera's not working. Hopefully it'll come back. Uh, 
Please bear with me. Okay. So here for our example, we want to increment a counter a counter variable. We're not really doing anything with it. We're just making some variable go up two times every second. But we want to reset the counter when either reach 100 or when a button is pressed. And that button is going to be connected to port D, pin 3. So here's a little drawing of our microcontroller. And port D, pin 3 is physical pin number 5. Port D, pin 3. And connected to that pin, we have a button that is going to pull that pin to ground whenever the button's pressed. So let's get to the code. So we're going to include io.h. We're going to include interrupt.h. And to get this delay for the counter, we'll just use underscore the delay ms function things simple and so we need to define SPPU as 8 million and include delay dives. All right now this is going to be pretty new and we'll talk about why we're going to do this next line uh, at the end. So we want to declare a volatile, oops, bar variable, and we'll call it i. And it's defined, uh, it's a global variable because we've, we've already have a main So now we'll go ahead and write main. value of 0 to i make port D inputs enable the internal pull-up resistor on port D pin 3 because without the internal pull-up resistor whenever the button's not pressed this would be at an unknown voltage so the internal pull-up resistor um, we'll keep this pin at high voltage whenever the button's not pressed. And so enable internal pull up. And now we can go ahead and set up our interrupts for that external interrupt and we'll write to e i c r a external interrupt control register a and we're going to get that a value hex 08 and this is to get an interrupt on falling edges on the int1 pin so let me go back. So we assigned it an eight. And so an eight would be a one right here. And so that's one zero. So falling edge of INT1 generates an interrupt request. And we did that because INT1 is going to be high voltage all the time until the button is pressed. 
it's high voltage because we enabled the internal pull-up resistor. And so when the button is pressed, then that pin goes to ground. And so we want that falling edge to generate the interrupt. And next we need to enable the external interrupt. So external interrupt mask. And we'll write a one to bit one. And now what comes next when using interrupts? We have to enable interrupts globally. So SEI. Now inside of our while loop, we're just going to handle that code with the counter. So we want the counter to count up to 99 and then go back to zero. So we'll use a for loop for i equals zero. And notice we didn't declare i here because error i has already been declared. So instead of writing, you know, int i equals zero, we just write i equals zero. So we start out our loop. Um, assigning i to be zero, so because right here we assign a value to i, and as long as i is less than a hundred, we're going to execute the body of code in this for loop. And every time, after every time we've executed the body of code, we're going to add one to i, so i plus plus. And what do we do inside the for loop? Well, we just delay for half a second. So delay 500 milliseconds. And then after we've delayed, we add one to I, check to make sure it's still less than 100, and then delay again. So all we're doing here is counting up from 0 to 99, and we're adding one to the variable I every half a second. And that's all we're doing in, inside of this program. So it's really just an exercise because there's no physical ramifications. And now the other part of our problem description said that we want I to be reset whenever this button is pressed or when it goes you know, up to 100. So it goes back to zero. When it goes zero to 99, then back to zero, and then up to 99. But when a button gets pressed, we want I to go to zero. So we're going to the ISR. And this is, we're about to see why we had declared I as global and also and why it's a volatile int or volatile variable. So ISR, and then the vector name is int1 vect, and we got that from the vector table in the data sheet. And all this does is sets i equal to zero. So the variable i has to be global because it's used in both of these functions. And if it wasn't an interrupt service routine, if it was just a function that we called, then it would be better off for us to pass it the variable value so we would declare i inside of main, and then it would be a local variable. But since it's an, it's an interrupt, and we don't know, we're not actually calling it out of main, then in order for that data to be shared between the two functions, it has to be a global variable. So that's why it's a global variable. But then why is it a volatile variable? Well, that's because, not necessarily in this case, but in some cases, uh, a compiler could look at the code and if there is no way that that variable is modified inside of main, so say it's just read inside of main, but it's, it's modified inside of the interrupt service routine, then the compiler could optimize the code and just set it to be a constant value. So the result is that if you didn't have this volatile in the declaration, then in some programs, you would get into the case where the compiler made that variable a constant inside of main. And so no matter what happened in the ISR, the variable inside of main would not change. So just to remember that whenever you use a global variable with an interrupt service routine, you need to declare it as a volatile variable.